Welcome to Seltzer Squad, the podcast about staying sober in the city with your hosts, Kate Sander and Jess Valentine. Hey guys, Kate here. I just wanted to let you know that this week's episode is sponsored by Audible. Audible is a huge part of my sober toolbox. I love listening to books and memoirs, and it's almost like having another friend who gets it. So visit audibletrial.com slash seltzer squad for a free month. You'll thank us later. Hey, Jess. Hey, Kate. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. How are you celebrating? <laughs> oh, fucking sitting on my couch. What else is new? Mm, I love that for you. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be going to Hawaii and meeting my future mother-in-law for the first time. Oh my God. Did you watch the happiest season yet? I did. What did you think? I liked The lesbian it. holiday movie. Did you watch it? Of course. Oh, Balled you did? my okay. eyes out. You did? Of course. Oh my God. So everyone in their twenties that I know that's watched it, hated it. And everyone mm-hmm. in their thirties liked it. I thought Agreed. it was fine. I thought it was fine. I didn't think that it was going to be some like Oscar worthy performance by anyone. I don't like Kristen Stewart, but I thought she was fine in it. I love Mary Steenburgen or whatever her name is. And the girl who played this sister was fucking hilarious. Which um, sister, Jane? And I Sloan. love, I typically love the main girl, mm-hmm. Mackenzie Davis, mm-hmm. who played Harper, but I hated her character. So yeah, I didn't like them. I was like, this is not a feel good holiday classic at all. No, it's not. It's not. It's like a toxic relationship. Yeah. I was like, this is a fucking <laughs> bummer. And these parents yeah. are Like, I mean, obviously they came around, whatever, spoiler alert, they came around at the end, but I was like, this is awful. Yeah, I thought it was fine. And then after that, we watched Uncle Frank. Have you seen that movie? I have seen the ad. I haven't watched it yet. Is it sad? Yes, but it's like he is gay and an alcoholic and we jumped right from the happiest into Uncle Frank and it was like, TJ and I were like, what the fuck? None of these things are exciting. And then I watched Girl on a Train. (laughs) Oh, I love that movie. Which is also a bummer. Yeah. Um, so happy I can't, holidays. I was talking about <laughs> Queen's Gambit because that has like, I guess, addiction issues. I have not watched that. I have no interest in it. I and crushed it. I just it's finished very The good. Undoing mm. with um, Nicole Kim and Hugh Grant, mm. what do you which think? doesn't have any addiction issues. I loved okay. it. Like I want to watch. Episodes, but I've just been watching True Crime. Did you watch The Flight Attendant yet? No. It's on HBO too. Is it good? I, wanna, I don't know. It's a drunk flight attendant. I'm into it. Oh, yeah. She blacks out that. and something happens. I don't know anything else about the story. Oh, shit. No, I just saw and it. And it's Haley. That the first time. Cacao. Cuckoo. Haley. Cuckoo. C- the Priceline girl. The girl from. The Priceline commercials. Sure. Or the Big Bang Theory, yes, if you will. That's the one. You know how else I'm celebrating? How else? Hot mess <laughs> holiday stories. <laughs> Can you tell by how excited we are in our voice that yeah. we are Can sharing you hear the hot mess smiling? stories? Because we're smiling. Um, I didn't realize that Kate went on our Instagram and told people to send in their holiday. Holiday specific stories. stories. Yeah. So I am, as always, very excited to read these. And once again, we did not read them first. We read we them completely live. So do you want to start? Or do you want me to? Um, I can start. I feel like I was going to disclaimer that we oh. also have a previous episode of tips and tricks for coping over the holidays and there are other Mm -hmm. podcasts that I've seen released lately of people giving their advice tips and tricks so we thought we would take a break from tips and tricks and tools for the squad and share hot mess instead share holiday hot mess instead it was a lot of I've, I've been a mess during the holidays a lot so I'm looking forward to this all right C writes hi ladies a little story from my drinking history which I was reminded of when listening to the recent hot mess episode I had booked a holiday with my boyfriend. It was going to be our first time away together, and I was the one who pushed the idea. We flew from Ireland. Whoa. Okay. What? Flew from Lanzarote. I don't know how to say that. For North American <laughs> listeners, this is a Spanish island off the coast of North Africa, full of pretty oh. scuzzy resorts for European folks looking for sun and cheap, plentiful booze. Okay, that's a, that's a nice clarification. The flight landed in the evening, and after checking into our hotel room, we decided to go out for drinks. True to form, I was aiming to get smashed and remember being behind the bar pouring my own drinks within a couple of hours, having befriended the owners. Next thing I remember is coming round in the lobby of a pretty fancy hotel the next morning with no shoes or purse and a concerned staff member trying to find my name and if I was okay. Ugh. I'd... I'd 
I found I'd lost the power of speech first and only time this has happened, but eventually I was able to give her the name of the apartments where we were staying and she put me in a cab. I arrived at our apartment to find my boyfriend furious. Apparently I had kissed both of the guys who owned the bar right in front of oh, him and then oh got God. stroppy. Not sure what that means. When he suggested I'd had enough to drink, he tried to drag me back to the hotel, but gave up halfway and left me in the street. As this happened oh. within the first few hours of a week long holiday, he wasn't impressed. And I even tried to get a flight home early, but couldn't. He was stuck with me. Given the disastrous start to the holiday, I decided I may as well drink through the rest of it. So the whole week involved me and my boyfriend trying to avoid each other when out and around the resort. I had hidden my smoking habit from him till then, but didn't see any point now and remembered him being disgusted that I was smoking and drinking from breakfast onwards. I also decided to befriend the many stray cats in the area and encourage them... <laughs> and encourage them into our apartment with food. I remember waking up on the sofa, snuggled up with several feral kitties. This also disgusted him. When we got home, he dropped me off at my place and I remember hopefully asking when I would see him again. Thankfully, he still had the sense to end the relationship and soon after I met the guy who is now my husband and who support me to quit drinking over 10 years ago, though I'm still inclined to pet stray animals. That's a good one. <laughs> That's yeah, funny. I got lost in New Orleans once because I followed a puppy. So <laughs> I get it. Were you drunk? Of course. It was like, <laughs> yeah, it was, we didn't need to get into That's it. That's dangerous. Yeah. I, these the ones that are like very dangerous also make me a little nervy when we get into it. I'm like, oh God. I know. What some happened of them are to like her? Hilarious. And then some are like, oh God. It makes me worry. Um, Congratulations okay, on 10 years. A see? Dude, I believe. All right. So A writes, uh, da, 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 da. my first drink was on my 21st birthday. And I swear I've thought about alcohol every day since. Drank heavily in my mid 20s, mostly in the Castro, which is the gay neighborhood here in San Francisco. When I wasn't drinking in the Castro, I was making any other event about alcohol. I glamorized drinking so much. I thought everybody did. But now that I am sober, I'm realizing that I don't see many people who drank the way I did. So my drinking led to two DUIs, ruined every romantic relationship, many friendships, and of course made family settings awkward. A domestic violence case, it hurts me to say this, been in jail so many times, once in a slutty cop outfit during <laughs> Halloween, touched hard drugs that I never never thought I'd try. Um, there's so much more that I'm ashamed of, but I wanted to share this funny holiday story from December, 2019. Mm. So last December, I was really living life in my mind. I was drinking heavily, but as a server, I somehow managed to save a lot more money than I have in years. I had many things to look forward to, like a weekend in Disneyland, which I was blackout drunk for the whole time. An Ariana Grande concert that I was also blacked out for, but the specific night that I don't remember was when I was, I went to a live podcast tour alone. It was a Sunday and this podcast tour is a binge drink alcohol crowd straight up with Saucy. Oh my God, Saucy? this person is my friend. We're friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling you'd like this person, especially because there's like Stassi is from that. Ariana um, Grande, Vanderpump Rules. I'm in. Okay, Vanderpump Rules. Let's I don't like about. dressing up for I Halloween, but so far I'm, I'm in. Okay. I had a meet and greet passes, front row seats. The vibe was right. So I parked my car, oh no, in the Castro because I knew that I would Uber to mm -hmm. the bars out there after the show and figure out how my night would end up from there. I remember pre-gaming pre in the Castro, drinking at the show. I was so obnoxious alone at the show and I thought I was being cute. The show ended and I remember trying to call an Uber, but reception was bad. But I remember meeting a group of people who were also heading to the Castro and we ended up getting into a taxi together. And that was the beginning of the night. It sounds like it should have been the ending of the night, but okay. Well, I'm reading ahead. This gets nuts. Oh no. We were heading, this is a long one. We were heading to the Castro. I was super excited. And the next thing I know, I woke up without my contacts and I am negative eight in both my eyes. In other words, I am blind without my contacts. I woke up in a random guy's bed and I tried to play it cool like I remembered him. <laughs> I quickly found out that I woke up in Napa. <gasps> Uh -huh. Okay, which is about an hour from San Francisco. I'm dealing with this massive hangover. I'm blind and I'm missing my car keys and cell phone. This guy is somebody I wouldn't normally go home to and is now just somebody I follow on social media. He doesn't know English well. and He didn't seem to care about the panic I was in. Uh -huh. Oh my God, honey. Luckily, this guy was super sweet and he drove me back to my city, but my car was towed for being parked in the area. It was, oh, that sucks. It was a nightmare to get my car out of the lot. Financially, emotionally, and physically, it was a rough time in my life. I lost my job shortly after that due to drinking. I just realized that this wasn't much of a holiday theme. 
<laughs> I just associated it with the holiday theme because it happened the week before Christmas. So I'll forever remember this day. Thanks, A. Oh, man. We would be friends. Thank you, A. We are friends. That <laughs> is, I've done that. I, uh, I went, I met some people. I went to a show by myself, met some people and hung out with them all night, wound up, wound up in the city and then got naked. Mm-hmm. Well, like lifted my skirt up and I wasn't wearing underwear at the bar. And then went to a hotel where I like came to and I was with someone in the band from the band I had okay. seen. It was Ugh. just really weird. And then I was like, I got to go. I got to go home now. And they were like, what? I'm like, I, I got to go home because I just like, I sobered up sure. in that moment. Oh. Anyway. Why weren't you wearing what? underwear? The fuck? I was wearing a maxi dress. I don't know. All right. Anyway, do the well, next I'm glad one. you're safe. I'm glad A is safe. On to yeah. S's story. I have a mortifying holiday hot mess story for you guys. It was about five years ago, and I had just transferred with my company from Southern California to DC, trying to get closer to our corporate office to move up in the company. Cut to the end of the year holiday party. I decided to invite a few coworkers over to pregame before. I'm getting anxious just reading this. I decided to invite a few coworkers over to pregame before the party and finish getting ready. This kicked off the terrible night of bad choices. Drank a bottle of wine on an empty stomach, so I was pretty drunk when we showed up. The party was only serving booze and appetizers, so there was basically no food to soak up the booze that I had already consumed. So another terrible idea, drink more, which then led to telling a girl that she can do better than my coworker who was nice enough to let me stay at his place when I had first moved. I guess I pushed somebody, told one of the managers in another office he was hot, told the IT guy he came... He came off as a jerk in his emails, lost my brand new Burberry glasses jacket, and got escorted out by a high up executive who called me an Uber. But it didn't end there once we got outside. I either tripped or something because the next thing you know, both her and I were in a puddle in front of the restaurant. I had to go into work the next day and everyone laughed it off. But let's say I just never recovered. I ended up quitting and moving a year and a half later. You would have thought I would have stopped drinking after that, but nope, five more years left of making an ass out of myself. I celebrated two years on 11-11, best wish I ever granted myself. Aww. Uh, that hits real home. I like <laughs> my first real job out of college. I got so hammered at the Christmas holiday party that I slept with a buyer, which is like someone in a completely other division that I had never met before. And I think it was just because he was from Minnesota, like when we were in New York and I was like, Oh my God, we're from the Midwest. Like I can only imagine. Oh. And he smoked cigarettes, which is like a oh, well, gateway yeah. drug. <laughs> All right. This is from S. S. I'm glad you're sober. Yeah. This is a different as. This guy I was dating at the time took me to this very fancy schmancy holiday party in Boston. It's a really well-known charity event with some celebs, bomb food, auctions, entertainment, open bar, you know the deal. I started drinking Merlot and it's off to the races I go. I kid you not, I had maybe 11 glasses of fucking Merlot. It's 8 p.m. and the Blue Man Group come on stage and I am blacked the fuck out. I'm really <laughs> upset I missed them, honestly. Apparently, I get up from our table to the most likely to most likely get more booze and I face plant right in the crowd. Oh, no. I was told it appeared as though I dove in. <laughs> I try to get up and right back down I go. Can I also note that I was wearing this tiny little dress and my asshole was 1000% out for all to see. Like this was not the time or place for Ratchet Blackout Me to be flailing all over the place with her asshole out. (laughs) Anyway, security quickly locates me and carry me out while Blue Man Group is jamming away. The guy who brought me to the event told me the next day that security snuck me out behind the curtains as if it was supposed to make me feel any better. Christ. To top it all Ugh. off, I woke up the next morning in this nice ass, a ho- nice ass hotel room to find myself in the bed absolutely drenched in Merlot <laughs> puke all over the white comforter. Like drenched. I don't know how the fuck all of that came out of me, to be honest. It literally looked like someone was murdered. The guy who I went... Uh, <laughs> The guy who I went with woke up next to it as well and and screamed out loud. I've never (laughs) seen someone look so disgusted. I felt really bad at the time, but he turned out to be a dick. So it's funny now. (laughs) Safe to say I'm not allowed back at that event. And that was the last time I touched Merlot. God bless that room cleaner's soul. I (sighs) left her cash. I promise. (laughs) And happy holidays to all. (laughs) I mean, my main takeaway is that I've always wanted to see the blue man group. (laughs) I never had any interest in the Blue Man Group, but I'm sorry that she technically missed it. Oh, the puking. I can only imagine what that looked like. Yeah, I don't want to know. Fuck. Ugh, bad. Bad. 
Thanks for your story. Right, we have yes. a few more. Okay. You want to do A? Yes. Okay. This one has two, so I'm just going to pick the top one. I have two hot oh, mess okay. stories for your enjoyment. I can look back now and laugh that I'm sober. A writes, every year my friends host a huge holiday party the night before Christmas Eve. They call it the Eve of Eve. They rent out a whole bar, hire a Santa, ice sculpture shots, the works. One year I was completely blackout drunk and decided it would be a good idea to take another ice shot. Well, after the shot, I trip. Oh no. I tripped and fell, knocking over the whole ice sculpture and and shattering it into a million pieces all over the all over the floor. If that wasn't bad enough, a piece of ice flew and hit my friend in the face, giving her a black eye for Christmas. <laughs> I felt horrible and still do. Thank goodness she was totally cool about it, but I still cringe thinking about my drunk hot mess ruining the Eve of Eve party that year. I will forever be the ice queen to my friends. <laughs> uh, I've never been to know, a party like that. Have you? No, but I did read ahead and I'm going to read her second story. Okay. okay. So her second story is, it was a New Year's Eve one. One year, we went to a bar that thought it was a good idea to give out full bottles of champagne and everyone at the party for a New Year's Eve bottle pop. That is crazy. Every single person? I guess. That's criminal. I decided that waiting for midnight was too long and drank the whole bottle beforehand. Totally out of my mind drunk after the party, I insisted to sleep in my friend's dog (laughs) crate with the dog. (laughs) This is so mean. I later pissed myself, leaving myself and the dog to spend the night in a pool of urine. Next morning, everyone thought the puppy was the one that peed everywhere. My friend insisted she pay for my dry cleaning of my expensive New Year's Eve dress. I was too embarrassed to admit... (laughs) <laughs> oh, that it, I was the one who peed in the dog crate. A few months ago, I took my friend to a very nice dinner and insisted that I paid and finally owned up to what I did. The poor dog took the blame for years and I needed to clear the air. That's good. It's a cute the one. The poor dog She's took the blame. The dog crate. Well, I would 100% do that and kind of did. I crashed at my friend's house and with my puppy and I pissed the bed, but I said the puppy did it. Which so. Which puppy? Grundle. <laughs> There's that photo of me. Yes. It was in Natalie's bed. She knows now, but yeah. I'm sure she probably knew then, but she was just like, mm-hmm. oh yeah. <laughs> so I was at her house and like I crap, obviously fell asleep. And then I woke up. She had slept at her boyfriend's house and on the nightstand was a bottle, a, I'm sorry, a glass of water and two Advil. So she knew. Wait. She just, okay, she's a good friend on so many levels because she like let you come to her house hammered with your dog, uh-huh. <laughs> sleep in your bed, yeah. pee in it. And then like make, did you make her go sleep somewhere else? Or she was just like, this is enough. I'm going to go she somewhere probably, else. Well, it was me, her and her sure. boyfriend. So she probably just went and slept at his house. She's Got like, it. I'll just sleep at your house since Jess is like passed out in my bed with her oh, dog. She's a good friend. Yeah. All, All right. I'm going to read L. more. All right. L writes, on the first holiday season I spent with my husband, my now husband of 18 years, on Christmas Eve, we went over to his best friend's family's house, which was a tradition. They are a wonderful old school Italian family and had a sit down dinner. There was tons of food and everything was great, along with a large bottle of Kettle One vodka, which is weird because that doesn't seem Italian. I (laughs) proceeded to drink an extremely large amount and ate and smoked cigarettes and kept drinking. We then proceeded home driving when we probably shouldn't have. And I threw up everywhere in front of my then boyfriend's house at the time. I was so upset that I had thrown up all that wonderful Christmas food I ate. That's literally Um, all I cared about. (laughs) I've done that. I threw up a $120 lobster once. (gasps) I was really bummed You were upset? Like drunk you was upset? (laughs) Well, it was, I threw up in my sleep. I don't remember doing oh, it. Jessica. I woke up to, oh, it gets worse. I woke up to like tugging on my hair. No. And what happened was I threw up in my sleep. It got in my hair. My dog was eating it out of my hair. I hate this. I hate these <laughs> stories. I'm you. sure I've told you that story before. All right. I got one more. Okay. This is a Thanksgiving one. All right. It's called the Thanksgiving surprise. All right. H writes. A few years ago, I went with my then boyfriend to a beers giving mm. at his friend's parents' house. This is already like no one's like shit their pants yet, though. Everyone just as a side note that we, I mean, a lot of barfing and well, there are other stories. I know <laughs> hot mess stories that just aren't holidays that are shit related. <laughs> I saw them in there. They're hiding. All right, everyone saves up. 
all of their super good and fancy beers for a fun tasting after the big Thanksgiving dinner. As one can expect, when alcohol is involved, things grew scattered and chaotic after a couple of hours. I wound up separated talking to someone and drinking a very large, very strong beer. They left to go to the bathroom and I waited to go next. After several minutes of waiting, I lost all memory, but I'm told I let out a deep burp and then someone (laughs) carried me through the room where the parents were sleeping into their bathroom where I proceeded to projectile vomit my entire Thanksgiving meal into their bidet and onto the floor. I loudly insisted that I could clean it myself, waking up the parents and making it very clear to everyone involved that I needed to go to sleep. Oh, that's very embarrassing. Wait, read the next, read the next line. Why couldn't I have used the regular bathroom? (laughs) The person I was talking to passed out in the front of the door, jamming it so that nobody could use it for the rest of the night. That sounds like a mess. Oh oh my God. I kind of like the the idea of like a beer, not beers giving, but like an idea where you get together with your friends and everybody brings something like that seems nice. I was actually thinking the same because there are so many yummy fall beers and Mm -hmm. stuff. I just don't want to say it, but I'm glad that you said it. Like that's when I was drinking, that would have been nice. Mm -hmm. However, those beers are usually really strong. They're Mm -hmm. like craft and they're like seven to 9%. So like I cannot, that's what put me in the hospital was one of the (gasps) fall beers. It was like super high. Had a couple of those, woke up in the hospital with an IV in my arm. Do you have any weird holiday stories? Mm, no, not really. I always went I home I, for the holidays. I mean, on the yeah. times I went home for the holidays, I would get like super fucked up with my cousins. And like one year I went to the wrong house because my parents live in like a <gasps> duplex and they like all look similar. Oh. And so my, I think my cousin was drunk and he dropped me off. And then I tried to get into the house, only it wasn't our house or my parents' house. And then I somehow got home, peed the bed woke up with a bunch of bruises and like my entire purse was scattered all over the entire street. Like the neighbors like returned like (laughs) my wallet. My dad was like, someone found this in the road. Oh my God. (laughs) No, I don't think I have any holiday stories because it's always just been like. I love that no one was like, do you have a problem with alcohol? They were just like, oh, someone returned your wallet from the road. Yeah, exactly. I have um, a hot mess story but it's not mine. It's my grandmother's from two Thanksgivings ago. So I went to my mom's house and I brought my friend Sophie and because she's from Denver and didn't have anywhere to go. And so my grandma's there. My grandma has become an alcoholic. Um, She loves her rusty nails and she's just, it's, it's, kind of bad. Like she fell in the bathroom. Like it's like that. And at one point she's like talking and like, where the fuck is grandma's teeth? Like, where did they go? Like, where are they? And no one knew like, where are her teeth? We don't know. And then she's like wasted and she like passes out on the couch and then she gets up and she's like, you know, walking around. And Sophie goes, I found your grandma's teeth. And they were, they were stuck to her. My grandma's left it. What? Wow. What? How did Sophie find them? dentures. What? How did Sophie just, find that she saw them stuck? She just saw them stuck on her boob. <laughs> oh, bless your grandma. Like, whatever, man. So I'll never forget that. That was like not this Thanksgiving the year before or whatever. I remember yeah. my grandma would always like, we. she had like a box of Franzia white Zin. Oh, nice. There was always a nice. box of white Zin in our Christmases on my dad's side and I remember my grandma would have like one one singular glass and then like walk around and be like oh you know like with like a naughty look on her face like <laughs> bitch sit down you That's know so cute she That's was just like, like my mom, my mom her has like one drink one... and she's like I'm wasted mm-hmm. I'm like calm like, down don't tell Bobby my grandpa it's like <laughs> okay <laughs> you know uh oh, it's so good as always we love these hot mess stories keep so writing keep hot mess stories until we meet again, be nice to yourself. And don't forget, hangovers, hangovers suck, suck, but they're funny. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. Every review helps other listeners find us. Music by Dead Go West. Art by Kate Sander. For show notes and resources, check out seltzersquad.com. 